things. I'm Les. And I'm Scandal. And let's, let's review, review a book, book together. together. Uh-huh. Woo! Yeah. So um, we're going to be talking about Legends of the Condor Heroes. Number one. Book one, A Hero Born. Which was actually translated by Anna Holmes. Or Holmwood. Holmwood, excuse sorry. Me, Anna Holmwood. And written up. by Jin Young, originally in Chinese. And it's only been translated last year, actually. Yeah. So um, this has been a thing since the... Night 60s before the night like 1950s actually okay like, like it's an old series anyway so i believe it got really like popular in the uh, 1960s in china and we've like i said only got it here in america now but one of the interesting things about this series is that apparently this giant epic chinese you know flying kung fu fiction was what started kung fu like the kung fu movie genre yeah, as we know it, basically. As, as today. we know it today, with especially with like the high wire, you know, like kung fu antics. All your and... stuff with Donnie Yen and Jackie Chan and all that style, where your your, your hero movie, your, your crouching, crouching tiger, tiger hidden, hidden dragon. dragon. Yes, like this is House where apparently, daggers. at least according to the translator, this is where it all started, which makes this review really weird to go to because <laughs> okay so i don't know if you guys haven't listened to the preview please feel free to um i was the one who actually read it me scandal yes. um so it was weird for me because i've watched a lot of kung fu movies throughout the years because i just <laughs> like they're just fun to me they're on that level of like what i would call camp on the level of kind of like mm, not as old like like the old versions of godzilla but more like the semi later versions of godzilla where they got more campy as it were mm-hmm. um but like, this is so strange to go to because I kept going, is this really tropey to say that it's tropey? So, <laughs> but um, it's the thing that originated all the tropes. So in that sense, it's not. This is the thing that made all this crap interesting. So one of the great things about reading a foundational piece of fiction is that if you aren't from the generation where that foundation was established, then all the things that were inspired by it and then created those tropes are what you're familiar with. So you go back and read the original and you go, God, this is tropey as hell. And what it is is influential enough to make it so that everyone wanted to write that again. Uh-huh. They went, that is the coolest sounding thing. So um, when listening to this, for me, it was really really interesting to go these are things that i recognize you have you know the classical singing storyteller uh-huh. you have you know the abducted daughter who you know they're going to like you know by an evil force you have the whole epic war of one side or the other going on you've got these sort of unexpected you know heroes living the quiet life until basically uh-huh. stuff comes to their front door oh yeah and, and that's the thing though, i think it's really funny the fact that like oh there's the review on here from the irish times of a chinese lord of the rings and considering that lord of the rings basically started defining the fantasy genre uh-huh. this was really like i'm like damn this was the one that really did define kung fu genre it's great it's so good so i will say that if you know anything about kung fu movies this might sound incredibly tropey and again like... i'm right there with you but it's also that thing that you can sort of mediate it of going like this is the grandfather this is the this is the originator yes this is the starting point so, anyway so you'll be walking through a very familiar even uh-huh. without knowing of them um cast of characters there's actually this one's got an encyclopedia dramatica at the beginning, it does it? so it actually it tells dramatis you dramatis personae that one dramatis personae sorry at the beginning so it actually tells you all the characters you're going to be running across um at first and every one of them sounds like i've seen that in a movie i've seen that in a movie i've seen uh-huh. that in a movie and it's like it's great um anyway the book the book is is fairly fun to read um just listening to it at first i don't know if it would be a trip of going oh my god this just is so much the type of thing i've heard before right or if it would just be like wow you did do it a little bit differently and everyone has reused it wash rinse repeat kind of thing a thousand times but if you know what it is going in then you're going to be like, it's kind of cool to meet the grandfather of it all. Sort of like watching Yojimbo. Right? You know? and, that, and that's the big thing where I'm like, if you love the kung fu genre, honestly, I think you will adore the crap out, out of, of this, this book. book. Like this, okay, and the thing is, is, this is only number one in a series. So this is supposed to be like a huge damn long series. Yes. And this is just the first book. So I don't know when the other ones are coming out. I haven't looked at it. Um, I've been kind of curious to read them again, but we've got so many other projects to right. do. I've been trying to figure out which one to read. <laughs> but I will say, at least for me reading this, I'm like... It's very tropey, so if you know anything about Kung Fu at all, you will already know basically what's going to happen. However, However, since this is the starting point, I really think you should read it if you like the genre. And if you've never actually been a, like interested in Kung Fu before, right. this might really tickle your funny bone and really get you going. If you can look at this as basically like a way of being like, this it's is a- your over-the-top, here's your, you know, ah, oh, we're going to do all the cool crap, here's your Mary Sue's and Gary Stu's and having the great, grandest time being badass, and, and here's all the bad. Like- 
bad guys. A, ba a battle action epic kind uh -huh. of thing. Like, even in the beginning, you get pretty clear, like, fight scenes and, you know, action, you know, movement and stuff uh -huh. like that. Like, it, it starts pretty quickly. So if you, if you are not into, like classic kung fu stuff but you've had friends who are into it you've heard a lot about it this could be a good like jumping off point uh -huh. also the translation is very thoughtful based on my experience with reading chinese to english translations this one feels very clean but also very like more accurate to the source material than some things i've read now i can't say that i speak chinese because i do not but i have read several books translated from chinese to english and this one feels a lot smoother than many of them right like it were it also feels like the culture isn't dropped. I feel like sometimes when I read Jeff, um, like like uh, foreign translations into English, where there is a strong culture difference in some subject matters, that you sort of lose it. And I was involved in a project at one point, um, translate helping translate a German children's book to um, English, and. It was really interesting to go like we don't have cultural context for this and helping the german author sort of figure out what the english translation should look like right um and just making it sound like it's still their stuff but it's you know accessible to an american audience right and i feel like this one strikes that balance pretty well mm -hmm. yeah like I, I would definitely say if you again if you want to read this please feel free to go and do so please support your library please support the translation like <laughs> this sounds really neat In additionally Kurgan, though if you're afraid of spoilers, it's already been out in China for years and years. You're totally uh, doomed. Oh. You're so screwed. And again, if you've ever seen kung fu movies, you probably know. Again, I'm like, but the thing is, that makes it so charming. I'm like, it's so funny. Like, really, when I was picking up, I'm like, this is the story. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God, they were not kidding. Because there was an introduction piece that I skipped over. Uh, but, like, if so, if you actually pick up the book, there's a lot in there where it talks about kind of the history of this book and where it came from. So it's really neat to read that. So if you get the physical copy or an ebook. Whatever we we do not we do not um uh uh, uh we do not uh, what's the word we don't have like like uh, prejudice against digitals you can totally get it on your Kindle or your reader right I'm <laughs> trying to, there's a specific word for it my brain's not coming up with oh, it I lost I, it. I know I'm lost it's fine um but uh, uh discriminate there we go we do not discriminate here there we, we go. all are interested in all reading books all types of it. literature are good <laughs> all all presentations of literature are good quite that that's kind good. of thing so I would definitely say go read it it could be fun um again if you don't like it that's totally okay again kung fu as it as it is anyway is kind of a thing that people like but I would I tend to say this would be a really good gateway place to uh -huh. start, though, if you're like, I've never known where to start with with Kung Fu, but I like to read. Right. Or the movies feel just a little too over the top to me, but I'm still curious about the genre. This could be a good way to get yourself in. Right. And some of the names are really, really fun. Like Sky Fury Guau is a great name. Uh -huh. <sighs> it's so good. I and was it's so like, funny, dang. too, because there's this really funny experience of him going, you know, getting found out at some point of going, you know, I know who you are. You are the son of this other great warrior. Uh -huh. going, who also had a big name like yours. This person has a normal name. This person has a standard name. This person, Sky Fairy Guo. I know who you are. You know who I am? How ah! did you know? I, I love stuff like that, especially like, it's also interesting to see in that way of like, you can sort of, if you've ever read a lot of translated novels anyway, you can kind of see where they were like, do I translate the meaning of the name mm -hmm. or do I leave it as what it would be the name right sort of that thing of going like sometimes you'd be like oh this name is just this thing but if you were to translate it it means sky fury whoa uh -huh. right and then you will have you know another one where they'll go no, no no we left it as it was in the pure original form right but then you're not getting necessarily the, the context feel. and so contextually the author has to the uh, translator has to make decisions on these kinds of things that can be really fun to read and in this case a couple of the names, even right in the beginning, are very over the top in that very charming, classic kind of way. And it's it's very good. So, again, um, I also would recommend it. Like I said, I thought the translation was done really well based on what I've been exposed to so far. And it is a gigantic epic. And it doesn't really slow down at any point. Like, even when you've got a storyteller telling a story and then also, like, in song as well as in word, like, it moves fairly quickly through what it's doing. So, for me, it called back very much to, like, a shonen anime kind of thing. What? Where it's very action-oriented. Yep. And moves moves quickly through the story, but without necessarily sacrificing, like, flavor and fun. Right. Well, and again, Kung Fu, fighting with your feelings. Why not be a shonen, right? <laughs> right. Exactly. Somewhere in there. So, yeah. So, thank you guys for listening. We mm -hmm. hope you have a great day. I have been Scandal. And I have been Lies. And uh, take care of yourselves out there. Bye! Bye.